well, the latest discoveries are, hmm, I guess, exploring how they work in therapy. And so there's a pretty big study comparing psilocybin to a antidepressant drug that's commonly used. And basically kind of showing, I mean, it was an interesting set of findings, kind of complex. Psilocybin did actually similar to the antidepressant, except it didn't induce the side effects and it didn't, uh, you know, it was based on, I think, one or two experiences and not mm -hmm. taking it every day. And people, although the depression uh, symptom changes were similar in one of the measures, but in all the other measures, psilocybin was better. People felt happier yes. um, and felt more meaningful in their life. Psilocybin works very differently than other antidepressants because mm -hmm. it helps people not only reduce their symptoms, but also have a more meaningful, uh, enriched life. There are a lot, right? So right now, yeah. I did a search recently, and there's 50 ongoing clinical trials with psilocybin uh, in North in North America. Yeah, in North America, and uh, they're looking at stuff for so. So the past research has mainly been on depression, mm -hmm. um, also kind of end of life anxiety, okay. tobacco addiction, and also alcoholism. Mm -hmm. So that's what's being done, and okay. what's going to be done, uh, or what is going uh, ongoing right now, is looking at. Uh, psilocybin for OCD, and also other drug-related addictions and this kind of thing. Okay. So there's a lot more, yeah, being done. In America, so it has to go through um, different stages of clinical trials, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so clinical trial is just a very rigorously done study looking at, you know, how does this psychedelic treat this condition? Mm -hmm. And um, so there are three stages. In the first stage, it's like very small group of people. You're just trying to see, is it safe? Does it look reasonable to study? And then phase two is like a bit bigger. And now you're actually more interested, less interested in just safety, but now you're interested in how effective is it? And there's phase three. And then now phase three involves hundreds of people across multiple different research institutions working together. Mm -hmm. And you need a certain amount of phase three trials in order to then say to the FDA or the regulatory agency, it's like, hey, look at these results. I think it's worth um, making this drug available to psychiatrists. Okay. And so there's these different stages. Um, and the whole process costs hundreds of millions of dollars, takes years. Uh, but right now, uh, there are, uh, psilocybin is mainly in phase two. Okay. And uh, the thought is, it'll be available to psychiatrists. It'll be done phase three within the next five years, probably. So within the uh, next five kind of, years. Okay, because I was going to ask like, uh, how long do you think it's going to take before like it's pretty much um, normal for people to like be being prescribed psychedelics? But like five year each, we could say? MDMA for in three years, probably. Mm -hmm. And then psilocybin mushroom um, in about five, probably. And what about LSD? There's a lot less research on LSD, so oh, it's hard please. to say right now. It's not a priority actually for a lot of researchers. Okay. Uh, mainly, most of the research is on psilocybin because uh, it's shorter, it's more manageable in that okay. sense. And also, when people hear LSD, they think of acid and hippies, and uh, it has a lot of connotations. Imagination, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, exactly. you cannot even imagine in France, oh my god. Like, weed in France is still like the devil, so like magic mushroom or LSD, oh my god, long way to go. But let's pray. I think just spreading uh, knowledge about it and helping destigmatize mm -hmm. it, because as you said, maybe in France it's pretty bad. People mm -hmm. think these are like really hard drugs that you will get addictive, you'll go crazy, yes. um, <laughs> and all these things. Which, if you do them responsibly, and the research has consistently shown that they're safe, they don't—they're um, not toxic for your brain. They're not addictive. Um, they can lead to very difficult experiences if you use them irresponsibly. Yeah, exactly. But there's also a ton of potential with them, right? So I think just educating people on yeah. them and uh, having a more scientifically based kind of perspective is one way. Uh, mm -hmm. Another way is to um, even send uh, like, like research reports to people in political power. <laughs> people yeah, do that a lot, actually. Exactly. In I think definitely. I think that's, that's what excites me the most because, you know, mm -hmm. the psychedelics, how they seem to work in therapy is that they put people more in touch with themselves. They uh, help people make insight into their life, have new perspectives, kind of release emotions they have been repressing yep. and just become more integrated in who they are. And of course, nobody's perfect. Um, people who are suffering are maybe kind of having a harder time with some of these things. 
but any normal person also has their stuff they're not working mm-hmm. through that they can grow more they can live a more meaningful happy and balanced life they can have better relationships so i think psychedelics have a role for anybody and it's helping them be more aware of their patterns and who they are and live in a healthier way uh, both mentally and also in terms of your actions okay so re- really interesting again and i just came up with like a, a question link into this one like it, it is one of the main goal of like psychedelic research to make it available to like everybody that wants to try I yeah know. i think i think eventually i think eventually that would be possible it might take a little while maybe after five years of it being legal for people uh you know with their psychiatrist then i think there are a lot of people interested in making big psychedelic kind of treatment centers where anybody can go mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason they want, you know, for their own growth or et cetera. There are places in, uh, actually in the U.S., in California, or actually, sorry, Oregon, the state of Oregon, where they're already starting to implement this. It soon will be legal there to oh. take a psych- psilocybin or a psychedelic in a specific kind of, uh, you could say, clinic or institution. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure how limited that, is, limited that is to people who are suffering from mental health conditions. It might be more broad. But uh, but definitely, uh, any psychedelic researcher sees the potential behind this treatment. I think there definitely is a, a lot of potential there um, for psychedelics to kind of, I think, help people wake up to their their um, the healing they need to do on themselves and also on the growth that they're able to to take in their life. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people get stuck into patterns and ways of being and they say, this is me, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. Even though they're not happy, even though, you know, uh, people, there's like relationship problems, etc. cetera, uh, they just don't believe they can change. So I think psychedelics, not that every single person <clears throat> might be ready to take it, but even hearing about other, other people who took it will think to themselves, hey, like, look how this person transformed. Real change is possible. It's possible to change how you think and how you behave. And I think just having that insight and kind of normalizing the idea of of growing as a person, of working on yourself, as reflecting and analyzing how you're behaving. I think a lot of the people, especially the older generation, just don't do that because it wasn't part of their culture. Yep. Uh, whereas I think a lot more young people are doing that, but I think it's the older people who control the world, at least right yeah. now. Uh, so I think uh, having that uh, shown to them, the potential of change, it, it has a lot of potential uh, there. Um, but that's assuming psychedelics are done uh, responsibly because I feel like yep. even if you asked about uh, nature awareness and kind of fighting, fighting climate change, stuff like that. And it does, this, it does seem that sometimes psychedelics do induce experiences where you feel really connected to nature, you don't feel distinct from it, and you're like, how can I harm nature that I'm harming myself? Mm-hmm. You know, and people have those experiences and uh, presumably in some it leads them to want to take more action. Yeah. Um, but, there, but I think it's important to note that it's like not guaranteed that, that that will happen. I think there are people who who are already kind of terrible people and who take uh, the psychedelic with other terrible people and then go deeper into being terrible. Right? They're a tool that you have to be very conscious of how you use it and if you use it properly. And if people already have within themselves a desire to change or a desire to be better for the world, yep. then it can help them. If they don't already have that intention, then it's hard to create it in them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like, um, it won't take only psychedelic, but it could be like uh, one of the tools for like um, the world to go better, I guess. Okay. Do you think like the more people will take psychedelics, the more like people will be like open, I guess, to like change and like- Connecting to your body and uh, going into your emotions and feeling them and changing, you know, your habits of thinking. This stuff is very um, commonly talked about in psychotherapy and psychology. And I think psychedelics really kind of are a way of enhancing these things in, a, in such a strong way mm-hmm. that uh, as people learn more about how, you know, a person took, was suffering from depression for 10 years and they took three psilocybin sessions and now they haven't been depressed in six months. Like, how is that possible? And then yeah. trying to understand it. And that understanding mm-hmm. can allow them to make, make changes in, them, in their lives that, that doesn't even need psychedelics. But now, since they know how that person changed psychologically, they can use that to also change. Um, thank you so much for your time. It was such an interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. I hope we can get in touch again soon. This is such an amazing opportunity you gave me. So uh, thank you again. Sure. Um, and have awesome. the best day. Happy to help.
Yes. <laughs> and have the best day. Good luck uh, for your studies and for trials and for everything else in your life. And yes, awesome. I hope to see you soon. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks Bye. so much. Okay.